Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. It's time to cover the request of this month's Quasar Commander, and I like where they're going with this. Last month we covered World Chalice, and we've already kicked it with Crawlers, so now we're moving on to Mech Knights. Premiering in the February 2018 core set, Extreme Force, a little over five years now, don't I feel old? Those misunderstood Knights of the Light loom large in the background of the World Legacy storyline, but have arguably been an even more pervasive threat in the game itself, no matter what level of technical play you fall into. As stated in previous videos, the Vrains era of Yu-Gi-Oh clearly had a design philosophy that wanted to make column play actually relevant. From link arrows denoting which zones you can summon extra deck monsters to, to cards like Infinite Impermanence and Broken Line with effects that made columns very relevant. But perhaps none have been more influential in actually getting us to watch how we play our cards than the Mech Knights. If you've been playing for a while, you've probably seen some gameplay or sat across from someone, and when someone's saw that you put two cards in the same column, someone just had to make a comment about how you set up their Mech Knight column. And I've gotta say, the fact that these figures of power that you always have to be paranoid about crossing paths with, making players in the real game act the same way is arguably the best execution of Ludo narrative I've ever seen in this game. And that's my quota for Pretentious Pablum in this video, so let's view this spectrum to see all the colors we're working with, line up their game plan, then see what other titanic terrors we can tie in to our troop. It's time to join forces with Mech Knights. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons and the fine people over at Dragon Shield. If you want to protect your cards with the strongest scales on the market that even come with their own lore while supporting the channel, use my affiliate link in the description. So, what's the deal with Mech Knights? Well, they're a series of light attribute psychic type monsters, and all of our level 5 and higher members can be special summoned from the hand to a column that contains two or more cards in it once per turn. And that's why people are so protective of their zone placements now. If you set a spell or trap card in one zone and summon a monster in that same zone right in front of it, then you just made a mech knight column that can be summoned in for your opponent. And that wouldn't be too much of a problem if the monsters summoned were pushovers, but the more fearsome of the mech knights came with impressive stats and amazing tutoring effects, giving them the ability to swarm a field that's been properly set up for them. And thankfully, mech knight pilots have plenty of tools to force the issue. But before we talk about them, check this out! Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about Girsu the Orcus Mech Knight. I'm kidding! I'm kidding! First off is Mech Knight Avram, a level 4 normal monster with 2000 attack and 0 defense. Oh, what a meme! Oh, what a hilarious meme you've become! Like, yeah, the flavor text is already pretty funny without any context, it's very tonally mismatched. But doesn't it feel weird that after the elegant prose of the World Chalice normal monsters, the only chance we have here to learn more about the cards without looking up a guide is just three simple words? Well, your sense of discomfort is right on the money. While we only have fan translations to go on, this isn't even close to the original. Let me read this to you. The hero who defends the light of the stars must destroy the darkness of the illusory world and entrust his power to the Chosen One. The will inherited by the Chalice of the Stars will become a new key and become the sword that cuts down darkness. See? Doesn't that just sound like the next chapter of an epic tale? Now all we have is this. Oh well, aside from that, it's a nifty unexpected die target to help build up your link material and makes for a nifty light to add to your magic key deck. Okay, we've checked it out, let's move on to the next one. Girsu the Orcist Mech Knight is a level 4 dark machine monster with 1800 attack and 0 defense, and if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send an Orcist or World Legacy card from your deck to the grave. Then, if there are two or more cards in this card's column, treat this card as a tuner this turn. And if you control no other monsters, you can special summon a World Legacy token, which is a level 1 dark machine monster with 0 attack and defense, to both players' fields and defense position. So this breaks 
basically every convention about what a Mech Knight card is, and that's because we found ourselves with another product of being a lore card. World Legacy actually did a lot in pushing the boundaries of allowing cards to be part of multiple archetypes, but I'd be lying if I said this saw equal play in both Mech Knights and Orcist. Sending Orcist cards directly from the deck to the grave is a huge boon to that theme, whereas turning into a tuner does little more than serve a lore purpose, as you can tune this and the token you make into Ib the World Chalice Justiciar which you can't even do anymore. But that's not to say that Girsu has no Mech Knight synergies. Bit of a spoiler here, but by sending World Legacy World Chalice, it can be banished from the grave on following turns to search basically any of the relevant World Legacy Speller Trap cards that Mech Knights would use. And while giving your opponent a free token can be bad in a lot of situations, this does give you the ability to manipulate columns to your benefit. If you set a Spell or Trap card in the same column as the token you gave to your opponent, et voila, you've got a viable column for summoning Mech Knights. And besides, you get a token to use for whatever you want, which is just music to my ears. Alright, now it's time to cover the core monsters of the theme. Mech Knight Blue Sky is a level 5 monster with 2000 attack and 2500 defense, and if this card is normal or special summon from the hand, which includes its own summon procedure, you can add Mech Knight monsters with different names, except copies of this card, from your deck to your hand, equal to the number of your opponent's cards in this card's column. This is easily one of our best monsters, clocking in with some respectable stats and some major searching capabilities. At worst, you'll be summoning this to a column that has one of your cards in the extra monster zone and one of your set spell and traps, which results in no searches. However, if there is even a single of your opponent's cards in that column, you get one search, two if they've got two, and if they have the vaunted extra monster zone, a monster underneath it, and a Speller Trap card beneath that, that is a total of three searches. Proper use of Blue Sky can turn the tide of battle all on its own, getting you back into a game where you had no resources, or absolutely burying your opponent while you're ahead, leaving nothing left in the wake of a horde of giant psychic monsters. Who knew a single animation studio could do so much? Mech Knight Green Horizon is a level 6 monster with 2100 attack and 1600 defense, and when an attack is declared involving this card and an opponent's monster in this card's column, you can target a Mech Knight monster in your grave and add it to your hand. So, for making sure your column matches up with your opponent, you can recycle one of your monsters, which is pretty neat. The battle doesn't even have to go your way, nor do you even have to be the one that declared the attack, meaning you could put your opponent in a situation where you still get some advantage for battling. Its 6 star level is also pretty relevant at time of recording, as rank 6 monsters are better than they've ever been, pair well with level 2 tuners to make powerful level 8 synchros, or you can use level 4 tuners to make some truly outrageous ones. On the surface, this card seems pretty mid, but in Yu-Gi-Oh, you never know how powerful a card can be, since new cards that can work with it are always just over the horizon. Mech Knight Orange Sunset is a level 6 monster with 800 attack and 3000 defense, and if an opponent's card in this card's column is destroyed by battle or leaves the field, you can special summon a Mech Knight monster from your hand. Out of all our monsters, Sunset is probably the most situational. Most Mech Knight decks are going to run tech cards that are meant to help get them out of the hand naturally, so they'd rather play something with a bit more utility than a monster that just summons more knights reactively. The 3000 defense is nothing to scoff at, though you'd think they'd give it more attack since it has an ability that triggers on destroying monsters by battle. But I did want to take some time to focus on the effect trigger. Since it cares about cards leaving the field in its column, along with them being destroyed by battle, it does mean that if they play a normal spell card in its column, this will actually trigger Sunset, so it's got a little magical musket vibes going on here, so keep that in mind just in case. But to be fair, not sure what you would pair with this to make it really good. It's about as hard to find synergy with orange as it is to rhyme with it. Mech Knight Red Moon is a level 7 monster with 2300 attack and 2600 defense, and it can banish a Mech Knight monster from your grave, then target a face-up monster in this card's column, and destroy it. Notably, this effect is not once per turn, so if you drop this into an extra monster column, you could potentially wipe out two monsters, one after the other. Unfortunately, it still says you have to target those monsters, so you still can't get around that kind of protection, even though this effect could allow for a more lenient templating. Honestly, I was expecting something more. Magic has Blood Moon and Alpine Moon. You're telling me you couldn't have even a little bit of stun going on here? Step up your game. Come on. 
Mech Knight Yellow Star is a level 7 monster with 2200 attack and 2800 defense, and like Red Moon, Yellow Star can banish a Mech Knight monster from your grave, then target a spell or trap card in this card's column and destroy it. This is also not a once per turn effect, but has a bit less utility once you remember that you can't put more than one spell or trap card in the same column. Uh, unless your opponent is summoning trap card monsters, but I doubt you'll be side decking to deal with the Odeon Turbo matchup. Honestly, this is more disappointing than Red Moon, having even less of an effect on the board state, and relying a lot more on its level and other attributes to hopefully help as material for other summons. And this time, I'm not even able to make a reference to some iconic card from another card game to round things out. I'm done with this. Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse is a level 8 monster with 2400 attack and defense, and once per turn as a quick effect, you can target a Mech Knight monster you control and move that target to another of your main monster zones. That's right, Move Man is here! Silly joke effect and all. Except, as it turns out, this effect is probably one of our most important. See, if your opponent is playing conservatively and not committing many cards to their board, it'll be hard to find opportunities to get our Mech Knights out of the hand, and that's where Indigo Eclipse comes in. If there's only a single column available, you can summon Indigo to it, use its effect to move itself to another column, slide to the left, and the column that was previously occupied by a Mech Knight is now empty, leaving you room to summon another Mech Knight. This also helps to line up your other effects. Red Moon and Yellow Star can be repositioned so they can remove cards, Green Horizon can be set up to trigger its battle effect, and Sunset can be moved out of nowhere to the same column as a resolving spell card to get that trigger for its effect. And being a level 8 monster that's easily summonable is no laughing matter either, because the rank 8 pool is stacked. Seriously though, how funny is it that the Column Changer eclipses half the other monsters in this theme? Mech Knight Purple Knight follows a level 8 monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense, and as a quick effect, you can target a Mech Knight monster you control and banish it until the standby phase of the next turn. And if you do, add a Mech Knight monster from your deck to your hand, except a copy of itself. Much like Move Man, this can facilitate the summoning of more Mech Knights by clearing out cards temporarily, but the twist here is that Purple Nightfall guarantees you'll have that card to summon once the effect resolves. The downside is that you don't get to keep the body on board for the rest of the turn to use it as part of an offensive push, but nothing stopping you from swinging in with it first, then bouncing it. Or heck, just keep it around until your opponent's end phase if you want to keep the blocker up. That way you get to keep a 2500 point body on board so your opponent has to deal with it, and you still get your shiny new toy. It's also got the ability to banish any of your mech knights, not just itself. So while it's slower than Move Man, it also allows you to realign your monsters. The Purple Nightfall into Blue Sky into more Mech Knights line has overwhelmed more duelists than I care to admit, and allows you to tutor out your more situational monsters as needed while playing your best ones at the maximum allowable copies. Now you can focus your efforts on tutoring out some normal gosh darn hands. Seriously, y'all are built like scythers, opposable thumbs aren't that bad, you know. Alright, our main deck roster is covered, now it's time to go over our extra deck choices. Starting with Mech Knight of the Morning Star, a Link 2 machine monster with 2000 attack, requiring any two monsters, including a Mech Knight monster as material. If this card is Link Summoned, you can discard a Mech Knight monster or World Legacy card to add a World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. And if your Mech Knight monster battles a monster in a different column than it, your monster can't be destroyed by that battle, also you take no battle damage from it. This makes for a pretty useful hand fixer to set up your future plays that's easily summonable by Girsu, while being an excellent bridge into our next monster. The battle protection is also very funny, because it's basically Waboku for anything that's not in your column. So if your opponent doesn't summon to the correct zone, they'll have to use effect removal to get your mech knights off the field, because battle isn't going to be very profitable, especially if you've got move man waiting in the wings to slide a mech knight out of a dangerous column. It's a pretty cool card, but I'm going to be honest, I'm always distracted by the legs. Why did they make them like this? Are those somehow knee joints? Why would you build them like this? Who hurt you? Mech Knight Spectrum Supreme is a Link 3 Cybers monster with 3000 attack, requiring two or more Mech Knight monsters as material. This card can attack directly if it's the only card in its column, and if this card in the extra monster zone points to no monsters, it can't be destroyed by card effects, and also your opponent can't target it with card effects. You can send one other card you control in this card's column to the grave to special summon a Mech Knight monster from your deck in defense position. Here it is, folks. Despite the fact that this uses at most three materials, this is the 
combination of all seven of the original Mech Knights. Grandiose in design, this gigantic amalgamation is ready to swing in for a huge chunk of damage, completely uncontested. As long as it's not contested by literally any other card in its column, which seems weird to me, they normally love having other things in their column. But if its arrows are clear and in the EMZ, it's a pseudo towers. Battle and non-targeting, non-destruction effects can still work on it, but everything else is a non-issue. You'll also want to commit to only spending spells and traps for its summon effect, as putting a monster in its column does leave it open to interaction while it's in there. This is a pretty savage boss monster that's now easier to make than ever before, thanks to the release of Morning Star. And while it's still not the best thing you could be doing, saying that you attacked your opponent for game by using the Pride Laser is pretty dope. Mech Knight Crusadia Avramax is a Link 4 Cybers monster with 3000 attack, requiring two or more monsters special summoned from the extra deck as material. While this Link Summoned card is on the field, your opponent can't target this card with card effects. Also, their monsters can't target monsters for attacks, except this one. Once per battle during damage calculation, if this card battles a special summoned monster as a quick effect, you can make this card gain attack equal to that opponent's monster's attack during that damage calculation only. And if this Link Summoned card you control is sent to your grave by an opponent's card, you can shuffle one card on the field into the deck. And it doesn't even target. Avermax means business. This is another crossover card, this time with the Crusadia theme, but here's the weird thing. There's absolutely no connection to the Mech Knights in this card at least insofar as the effects are concerned. It doesn't really care about columns, rather just funneling all attacks towards it and beating the heck out of anything that wasn't normal summoned. And even mostly things that were. But I ain't complaining, because this card is ridiculously powerful. Usually paired with IP Mascarena to add effect destruction immunity on top of the targeting one, this card is played in all kinds of decks for how generic and powerful it is, and will even come with a sweet retaliatory effect if your opponent is somehow able to clear it. It may not be much of a Mech Knight card, but it is still one heck of an anime protagonist. Look, they've even got blue hair. You gotta have blue hair. Okay, the extra deck is out of the way, now it's time for the spells and traps. Like with most members of the World Legacy storyline, we don't really have any on-theme spells and traps to work with, but rather a number of World Legacy cards that name-check our theme in their effects. And we're gonna start with one of the best, World Legacy Memory, a quick play spell card that special summons a Mech Knight monster from your hand or deck in defense position, but return it to the hand during the end phase. And for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters except Mech Knight monsters. So yeah, free Mech Knights right out of your deck. It can summon a blocker to keep your life points safe, get you more material for your Link Summons, enable cool effects. All of these things are possible with memory, and because the restriction only applies after you resolve this effect, you can summon whatever you want beforehand. Though keep in mind that this won't trigger Blue Sky if you summon it from the deck with this. All in all, this is a solid card that will help you keep the big monsters flowing, even if your opponent isn't being cooperative. But now I've gotta wonder how the purely memories interact with this. I can practically smell the purely or canon in the dual terminal storyline short now. World Legacy Key is a continuous spell card that, when activated, lets you target one of your banished Mech Knight monsters or World Legacy cards and add it to your hand. And while on the field, it negates any opponent's trap effect that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight monster you control. Ooh, do I sense a bit of S-Force gameplay going on here? Uh, keep an eye on that templating for later, but suffice it to say, this helps keep your opponent from flipping a ridiculously powerful trap card and wiping you out. And with the power of Move Man, you can actually swap one of your Mech Knights into the associated column because this negates as part of the resolution. So as long as your Mech Knight is there at that point, that's all that matters. It's also another great application of memories, as it turbos out a Mech Knight into any column on your field so you can stop things like Evenly Matched. Oh, and it also gets you back the monsters you banished for Red Moon and Yellow Star, but that's not exactly this card's key feature. World Legacy Scars is a field spell card that grants all Mech Knight monsters on the field a 300 attack and defense boost. Once per turn, you can discard a Mech Knight monster or a World Legacy card to draw a card, and you can banish 8 Mech Knight monsters with different names from your grave and or face-up field to send your opponent's entire hand and extra deck to the grave. Wow, now that's pretty goofy if you can manage to pull it off. With the addition of new Mech Knight monsters over the years, you now have a deeper pool of names to choose from to help 
with this, but I've been tricked into something like this before. Deskbot Base has a similarly brutal effect that never works out the way you want it to. In this situation, it turns out there's a lot of decks with good grave effects, even in the extra. Who knew? But honestly, I think it's good enough as a small attack boost and a way to rummage for cards. Seriously though, what is the lore team's obsession with setting post-apocalypses in dilapidated cities covered in foliage? There are other settings for this kind of thing, you know? World Legacy Whispers is a continuous trap card that, when activated, targets a level 5 or higher monster on the field, and it gains a thousand attack and defense until the end of this turn. And while on the field, Whispers negates any opponent's spell effect that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight monster. Having a conditional Imperial Order ain't half bad, and the boost caring about the level means you don't have to slap this onto a Mech Knight necessarily, you could put this on any high level monster you choose to splash in. Still, despite the fact that it answers spells, the activated effect just ain't worth it a lot of the time, especially because it's not permanent. Honestly, I'm just more concerned about Lee's projectors. Uh, are they okay? World Legacy Secret is a continuous trap card that, when activated, targets a level 5 or higher monster in your grave and special summons it. And when this card leaves the field, destroy that monster. And while it's on the field, it negates an opponent's monster effect that activates in the same column as a Mech Knight monster you control. That makes this a surprise breakthrough skill. As a monster effect activates, you just flip this up, summon a Mech Knight to its same column, and that monster isn't doing anything. I'd also like to point out that, while Secret leaving the field will destroy the monster associated with it, the reverse is not the same, unlike similar cards, namely Call of the Haunted. So if you lose the monster, you still get to keep your kind of skill drain. Of this trio that negates cards based on Mech Knight placement, this is probably the best, as it revives your powerful monsters and provides monster effect negation, one of the most powerful forms of negation in the game. Also, yeah, uh, Lee is evil. How'd you all not know that? It wasn't exactly a secret. Okay, that's all the Mech Knight cards, but what do we do with them? Well, with a mix of powerful monsters and disruptive interactions, mid-range is the way to go for us. Identify when your opponent has overextended, catch them in your stun trap, then turbo out all the Mech Knights you can for a clear win. Along the way, we'll try to find other monsters and column synergy that gives us an edge the competition can't jack from us. So what can we play to help them out? The best thing about a deck that's full of monsters that inherently summon themselves is that your normal summon is wide open for just about anything you could ever want. And you know what that means, Alistair the Invoker. But I'm probably not the first person you're hearing this from. Invoked Mech Knight was a very powerful deck back in the day, as Alistair searched Invocation, which you could set to set up one of your columns to summon a Mech Knight, and once you had finished those plays, you could flip that Invocation over to use any Link material as Fusion material, with Invoked Mechaba being the frontrunner to summon, what with all the lights. Negating and banishing cards is hard to pass up, especially since you can revive Mechaba with secrets. Alistair also comes with the added bonus of giving us access to some useful Link 1s, as turning this mage into Almirage or Artemis Magistus helps make a viable column. Because even without your opponent's involvement, having a monster in the EMZ and setting that invocation right below it gave you a viable Mech Knight column. Kaijus are also another huge boon to the deck, regardless of if you use Invoked. This simultaneously gives you the ability to deal with towers or monsters with annoying on-field effects, and because you decide what zone the card is summoned to, you can set up that Kaiju wherever you wish. But don't feel like you have to limit yourself to just Kaijus. While strong, we do have other, more powerful polymorphers that have the drawback of taking up your normal summon. But as we've established, that's not really a huge deal. While it may seem counterintuitive, to use cards like Lava Golem and Wing Dragon of Raw Sphere mode to clear out more monsters, thus robbing you of useful columns, sometimes there are setups that demand an answer before you pop off. Iron Dragon Tiamatron is also a really funny card to add into the deck, as it gives you some unexpectedly powerful removal. It can be quick summoned from the hand as an effect if there are three or more cards in the same column, which you can easily do once you plop a Mech Knight into a column that has two or more already, but it doesn't have to be summoned to that column. Then it destroys everything else in this card's column, and keeps both players from using anything in those zones. A great application is locking off your opponent's EMZ once you've taken the other one, just to make sure your opponent doesn't clear out the one you have so they don't take it. 
Well, like with all our World Legacy archetypes, checking out what other World Legacy spells and traps work with us is a great idea. Succession is, of course, outstanding. With all of our links, the ability to reborn material is stupendous, and a great way to access it is via Lib, the World Keyblade Master. It's easily summonable off of Girsu and its token, and it even sets up all of Lib's effects. By sending World Legacy World Chalice from deck to grave, letting you search for succession once you get them, on top of any of our Mech Knight-related World Legacy cards, and then once you've had a chance to use that World Legacy card, you can then link off Lib to shuffle an opponent's card back into the deck. Chalice has already shown its chops, but what about some other World Legacy monsters? World Shield protects all World Legacy cards in its column, not just monsters, so you can use this to keep secrets safe. World Crown gets you more material for your summons, specifically for Morning Star, or can just sit on the field to negate an extra deck summon. World Arc is a reactive reborn for any of our links in the face of effect destruction from our opponent, and World Gears of Theological Demiurgy is a cracked card if you can get the material for it. The Mech Knights will cover Psychic, World Crown covers Machine, so as long as you run another level 5 or higher monster that, hint hint, you can revive with secrets, you have a monster-based towers that can wipe the board every turn. World Legacy Clash kind of works along with our game plan, giving us a temporary banish a la Purple Nightfall, but instead of a search, you massively debuff a monster. And of course, World Legacy Trap Globe is a slower but arguably better Pot of Avarice, since it recycles banished cards, doesn't target, and is thus a lot harder to interrupt. Another amazing card that lines up with our column gameplay is Beast King Unleashed. You're already summoning monsters to columns that presumably your opponent has full of cards, so by declaring an attack with this, you're just bouncing every other card in that column. It will bounce back your own cards, including the Mech Knight that triggered this, but considering how easy they are to summon, it's not really difficult. And as a continuous trap card, it can actually help you set up those columns for later. And it's not once per turn, it's once per chain. So the more Mech Knights you can field, the more of your opponents you can rip away. And since this triggers at the start of the damage step, you can actually be a little cheeky with this. Once this is face up, your opponent's probably going to want to summon two different columns to avoid the effect. But when they go to attack one of your Mech Knights, just chain Move Man's effect to move the attack target into that column, and there you go, you've got your bounce. As for a silly tech pick, how about some Psy Impulse? It fulfills the requirements of being a normal spell to help set up your columns, and it can really screw up your opponent's card economy. If you do this going first, your opponent will still get to draw up to a fourth card, but essentially puts them down two cards from the six they could have possibly had. And for trading a spell and a monster to accomplish this, that's a pretty good rate. Though it does get worse the more hand traps your opponent makes use of, as well as how long the game goes, since hand sizes tend to dwindle as the game continues. If you want something a little less silly, try Psychic Tuning. It's a more restrictive secrets with less utility, but it does turn the summoned Psychic into a tuner. Not only does this give you some funky synchro options you otherwise wouldn't be able to make, like Barone, sinking a blue sky into another non-tuner blue sky, you could also send them to the grave to make Ultimaya Zulkin. Set another card, and that gets you a Crystal Wing. But why stop there? Summon back Move Man and get Purple Nightfall, and that's Ultimil Bish Balkan. Have fun with all those tokens! And that's all I have to say about Mech Knights. This theme is so sick, easily splashable with a strong core of cards, enabling big bodies and easy material, with tools you can add during particular formats to give you removal. While not particularly strong now, I don't think it's out of the question that we'll be seeing this archetype in the future to bolster other strategies. So despite their cold, intimidating appearance, they're more than ready to be your Mech Knight in shining armor. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Mech Knights ready to hold up their companions with those columns, or are they about to crumble? And what Mech Knight is your favorite? Spectrum Supreme is just peak Yu-Gi-Oh for me. I love going through the artwork to find all the little parts of all the other component monsters. Let me know in the comments, and while you're down there, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh. It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you in part by Dragon Shield. When you want to protect your cards with the power of dragon scales, get some sweet lore for them, and support the channel, check out my link in the description to get started. This video was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander Green Knight, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Adam Zajdel, Andrew Newman, Avi Chali, Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Chibi Gohan, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, 
Great Big Pillock, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Ironic, Iskander 711, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Mana Charge, Marluxia is a Girl, Meteornis, Mighty Action X, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sammy Haim, Sophie, apparently, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Charizard Flame, The Wizard Moose and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Ariel Kersey, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Chris Kessler, Corbinisms, Danny Bound, Drakenwald, Emony, Eva Padilla, Evan Sox, Haro, Herbal D, Jesus Garcia, Kale the Dragon, Carp, King Scarlet Yu-Gi-Oh, Lord whoop de doo Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Matt Simmons, Nitromo, Put a Card Trooper Up My Ass, Call That Card Trooper an Ass Sandwich, But No Agent Calls It Lunch, I Vote For Ophion To Be Banned, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, Super Purred, The Legendary Raven and Tucker Ordorn, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people. So if you'd like to help support the channel, get your name in these credits, and get my videos earlier than anyone else, make sure to check out my link down in the description for my Patreon to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to see another deck that's got a thing for column play, check out this video I made covering magical muskets. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye